Hello, hello there, and welcome back to War Thunder. So this is uh, footage from the dev server where I shall demonstrate the new 12.8/8.8 Panzergranate mit Treibspiel, and this is basically a 8.8 uh, .8 centimeter uh, APCBC round that gets fired as an APDS round basically and it has increased penetration there you can see I'm actually using this in the test drive and we will have a look at how this goes so this was uh, recorded a few days ago since then the dev server to my knowledge was not open anymore however I just fire here at some targets and then you see where I'm going first target is a T-44 at you know reasonable combat ranges and the shell just ricochets. So we have more penetration than the 20 pounder APDS. We have roughly the penetration of an IS-7 according to the stat card, but I just bounce off because the shell is obviously still a long 88 APCBC round that just gets fired at even higher mass velocity. And it actually performs worse against sloped armor than the regular uh, Panzergranate 43 does from the 12.8 centimeter gun. And on the dev server I couldn't see that the shell would be also available for the Jagdtiger, so it's only for the Maus ND100. There was also years back a big controversy about this shell, if it even exists or not, then it was apparently debunked and it would have been only there for um, being HE rounds, but then actual documents appeared, etc, etc. Funnily enough, I knocked out here his gun barrel with the ricochet. Um, but yeah, you can see it's not just one shot, uh, it's multiple shots. I also asked a few people here and there what um, the, you know, the historical accuracy thing is with the shell if it ever existed, and apparently it existed. Also, there were numerous different versions tested, and the 12.8 centimeter gun was specifically used without a muzzle brake, unlike the long 88 um, that, as you know, has a, a muzzle brake. This one doesn't have because it was intended to be used with a Treibspiegelgeschoss. So there were also numerous um, numerous subcaliber rounds for the 12.8, where the core would be somewhere between 65 and 88 millimeters, and the 88 millimeter um, subcaliber round we have here. It is a bit lighter than the original long 88 shell from the uh, Tiger 2 etc. But it's uh, still fired at 1230 meters per second and has 312 millimeters of penetration. But it really likes to bounce on sloped armor. And that kind of um, defeats the purpose of its introduction where it needs higher penetration in order to deal with armor that the mouse actually faces and also the E100 and I think that this shell then also should be available for the Jagdtiger since it is practically the same gun and it also has no muscle break but that's besides um, I think this is something that we'll have to see. I actually found documentation where the values that the shell actually has as its um, current penetration at zero angle of degrees was listed as the penetration at 30 degrees of uh, um, or 60 degrees of impact. So that would also benefit the highly angled penetration as far as I can understand it. Um, I still have to do some digging, I still have to do some research, I still have to talk to certain people about this, but this is how it stands right now. And you know what, without further ado, let's enjoy the E100 in what I would describe as a pretty remarkable battle. And yeah, here we are and we just spent two minutes or so getting to the half point between the objective and the spawn. and. Yeah, it looks like the tank is really fast, but we were going down a slope for quite some time in a straight line. And the second you do a turn, you lose all the speed. The maximum speed of the E100 is 40 km per hour, but even on hard terrain you're struggling to reach above 20-22 km per hour. So this was just a 
point of moment where we just saw this high speed, this quote unquote high speed. Um, so the next thing is, this battle looks like the 100 is an absolute fun machine, but there are two problems with it. Uh, first of all, and I just cannot really get this out of my mind, is a 30,000 civil line repair cost. Oof. Oof. This is why recently I barely played the 100. Uh, in fact, I didn't play it for over a year. Um, but it still got it. It still got the charm. It still got the looks. I'm still proud to have one. And yeah, there we see another thing. Light tanks with stupidly good guns. In this case, it uh, was an R3 T106 FA. Every nation at 6.7 has some lol pen light tanks, except the British, and the German one is a premium one. Um, but besides this, this is what kind of slowly dug the grave for the wild popularity of the mouse in E100 being used. Everybody wants one in its hangar, nobody wants to play with them. The mouse also 17,000 civil line repair cost. But what this tank actually is, is a big portion of German heavy distraction. And to a certain degree we will see this in this battle. That, that the people are always really confused when they see one. Very often a quick APFSDS round or heat FS round uh, will kind of quench their curiosity if this thing is killable or not. But sometimes the, the people just, um, yeah, are astonished by your presence. Not just the 100, but also the mouse. So it's, it's, it's weird timing that we get the APHE DS round uh, that I demonstrated just a few minutes ago. And the event where the mouse was available again quickly. Um, you know, that, that is some curious timing to say the least. So we'll see how this performs and if it gets nerfed or buffed or e introduced in the first place and what all the, um, let's call them um, anti wearaboos do. You know, anti wearaboos those are tier boos, those are free boos, those are honor boos, etc. People that just um, think that Germany is overpowered because they never played German tanks themselves and they would just suck in any other tech tree just they suck like in their own tech tree. Watch this shot. Yeah, that was an Amorak on a Calliope and because it was just a 75 I guess it didn't explode. No. This Calliope though, <laughs> man, he has all the premium buyers. We'll, we will see more of them later. Now, the 100 and the mouse. They can be absolutely hilarious, especially when played in a squad. They can be great fun, quite literally, but they also can be highly frustrating. Also, watch again. Yeah, I just blacken, technically speaking, an external MREC, and he's still happily firing away. Spot another target. Thank you very much. And yeah, I have no idea what it was. Let's but let's get into cover. And and this this is one brave Calliope. So we get here the driver and the gunner, and we finish him off. So that were four shells from the 75 um, against a low battle rating tank. Again, is it still one of the most expensive? tanks that you can get for golden eagles especially at this battle rating and again we need to use the big gun yeah i think also the 75 heat has uh, has lost a lot of of curious what is that is that a hellcat yeah um anyways the great charm of the 100 is not just the size and the weight and the thickness of the armor and the, the, the main gun, but in my opinion also the coaxial, that's a weird Hellcat, that's a weird, any, besides the point, the 75mm is just so great to switch between heat and smoke 
and you can also fire this and very unexperienced players then think that you fired your main gun they think they have time to fire and then you just can blast them because very often then they expose their weak side armor beautiful beautiful pirate techniques here by some skill chayu 288 player <laughs> and some more uh, it's it's beautiful this battle was one of those rare battles where I didn't have to fight helicopters, where I didn't have to fight hordes of planes myself, where, it's a, where it was a little bit of a, of a walkthrough. But while a lot of other tanks already have APDS rounds, AP, FSDS and heat FS, uh, especially at higher battle ratings, this... Mm. Nice. Yeah. Quite literally, um, I enjoy that. <laughs> Especially on such very balanced British tanks. Um, I love it. Those Coppola snipes, they're, they're, they are just the quintessence of, of being awesome. So, a uh, very optimistic shot here at a plane. I think at a, a certain point the plane was overtaking the shell again. And let's, let's come back to the 75-128mm combo. Look, BMP, the shell does nothing, not hull break, but the big one does. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, that was the good part about the battle, and let's have a quick look at the results before we come to a bit more. The tank has a talisman and also a premium account status, so nearly 12,000 RP and nearly 60,000 silver lines for 7 kills and heavy metal hero and survivor. Yeah, that's just adequate for the 100 and uh, also only third in team because obviously there was no capping and no assists. Now you just saw this battle and you think to yourself, well, that that looked great i need to have this tank where i can where can i get it well you can get it on the marketplace for absurd amounts of uh, gaijin coins don't buy it it's not worth it but even just a slight up tier lets you face this historically accurate comrade mate <laughs> i i literally just came out of the spawn i This is fun. This is fine. Oof. <laughs> uh, you know, you know when this happens. When this happens, I'm I'm just asking the purpose of my existence in this tank. Really, I do. Um, but we're not done here yet because for a change. That tank here didn't kill me. And I killed him actually with the machine gun. And that was pure luck. So right at the start of the battle I got flanked by this tank. And it's really this M56 Scorpion and many other nations 6.7 light tanks that I just want to briefly mention here. Because let's be honest, if you know, light tanks, a full battle rating lower, have no problem lol panning the heaviest steel armor in the game. On a regular basis, um, I would suggest a slight battle rating reduction. And I suggested this and then it was heavily, 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 heavily downvoted on a certain Discord. Anyway, um, this is just a few battles that I want to show you where I'm just about to have fun. And then kaboom. And if you just uh, take notice, it's always the same central ammo rack. Pin, point, pixely, the same. Ontos, I tried to be smart here and, and use the smoke shells here to smoke that guy up. So, first smoke round, second smoke round. And a third smoke round right at the corner and I think to myself I can pass at that moment I didn't know that it was an ontos I wanted to just be smart and attack from the other side but yeah um, 
try and error, but again, pinpoint accurate the same ammo rack. But it's not just the American light tanks. In this example, um, I was just heavily fighting the corner for a while. And at a certain point, multiple rocket impacts from the USH-405. But anyway, there are also nice scenes. Some of them I just want to share with you. And those are the following. Object Nano 6. <laughs> Love it. And then here I, for a change, smoke up successfully and just in time to not get killed by this American T-34. So minutes later, we see him on the corner, range finding. Beautiful. I just love it when it when it works. And also the heavy fighting, you know, when, when you get those scenes, when you just multiple enemies from multiple sides it can be really breathtaking this is a scene and then we go to another complete battle so i hope that you get your full dose of e100 the first thing is here a beautiful side shot into a completely overpowered premium lol and then i thought to myself should i push should, should i wait there is none of my team right here um it looks strange. Okay, somebody noticed me. I also noticed the BMP-1. 75 is not enough. Yeah. It was mandatory to use the 128mm for this light tank. You can see that's a constant experience. That the 75 HE does not hull break light tanks. Which would really help if it does. It would really help. Um, the reload for the big gun is 18.2 seconds with a fully trained ace crew and obviously um, cooperating enemies help Then I get disabled and I think to myself. Oh boy. This is not gonna end well But this is then where some of the hilarious e100 magic happens He tries to disable my main gun and so I again try to smoke up so that he doesn't have a clean shot Maybe, just maybe, I can bridge the 10 seconds of repair. Just maybe, just maybe. Come on. Come on. Oh, uh, three. And he dumps it into the gun barrel. And I get his gun, but we both get bombed by an I-185. Stories, you, you, you can't get anywhere else. That's just E100 and mouse experience. Trust me. Anyway, then there was this battle on, on Hürten Forest. And there were multiple things about it that were just beautiful. The column of German armor. There is a mouse to my right. There is a Ferdinand in front of me. I'm an E100. Multiple other German heavy tanks. And this is one of the rather rare, I would say mid-tiers. You know, it's, it's not a complete down tier. And... Also, for a change, the lighting, the god rays, um, just was spectacular. And that is before the next graphic update. So, ah, oh, damn it. What was that? Might have been an M26. You don't see them uh, very often these days. And with a 100mm front plate that's barely angled. Yeah, he was really lucky. I think that was the machine gun port side armor bulge. That kind of made the shell not pen. But anyway. Uh, yeah. The knife fight. Yeah, there we can see Leopard just killed an M26. So the knife fight here in Hurtling Forest is one thing. But the god rays, the scenery. Uh, it, it just brought back memories when the game was vastly different. And in my opinion, when it uh, is about this battle rating, better. When there were not that many lol pen tanks. When armor meant something these days even a t95 which just outsped my 75 millimeter heat shell uh, also was more or less impenetrable from the front nonetheless i dare to go forward a bit more and just wait and see caution i have some backup so let's take the other side of the of the house 
And let's try to make a pincer maneuver on some of those tanks. I like this coordinated advance. I like this, um, you know, using your brain. And again, ah, oh, we killed the BMP-1 again with a hull break before his uh, missile impacted. And again, he thought that he has nothing to fear because I shot just the, uh, you know, secondary 75mm gun. Yeah, I, I just can't get enough of those god rays. They're, they're just looking beautiful. I'd love to see the gameplay being um, as much priority as the graphics though. But nonetheless. Again, there is a mouse, there is still a Ferdinand. Some tanks on the flank supporting us. We have them on the run. We have them precisely where we want them to be. And there is also a pesky T44-100 and again a beautiful Coppola shot despite his machine gun blinding efforts which nearly worked though and now here comes the aircraft yeah a lot of action here in the skies nothing that I can do about it despite the 23 degrees of gun elevation on the E-100 and the mouse Yeah, I better get away from that mouse because that would be one hell of a beautiful um, attraction. Yeah, that was um, a bad shot. I should have gone for the lower glazes though. But I thought that it would be the normal IS and not the IS 2 mod 44. My mistake. So you can see that's a that's a heavy tank, uh, 1.3 battle ratings lower, and I can't low pen him. But here, I took a good aim. So I just love it when it gets slowly but steadily forward, when you have other heavy tanks and uh, teammates to support you. I think that's great. And again, have I, ever, have I ever told you how beautiful the scenery kind of looks? The immersion is there. It would be totally ruined by, let's say, um, 6.7 light tanks with heat FS, etc. So, watch this. I try to shoot him with the 75, and when the dust settles, despite him being a light tank, he's still there. His mistake, my profit. Remember the updates a few years back when everybody hyped the mud puddles? Yeah. <laughs> this road is quite excessively puddled, if you can say it like this. So I'm just I'm just chilling here. I'm just relaxing. It's not about, you know, getting getting quadruple kills and killing everything on site. It's just relaxing and enlightened by God rays. Have I mentioned that I like God Rays? What is you? Oh, that's a tortoise. Derp. Be gone. Actually, a fucking wolf killed it with a bomb. Ah, the irony. When Chairman cast bombs at British tank. So, where is that SBA? Oh, I think it just got killed. What a shame. Well, you know what? That seems to be the end of this match. And that's also the end of my commentary for today. So, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Please give it a like with it. Subscribe if you want to see more. And we'll see each other on the waves in the skies and on the battlefields of War Thunder.